Hi, my name is Jay, and this video is a short demonstration of an integrated hardware and software solution for tuning a Megasquirt ECU using an iPhone 4S, iPhone 5, or iPad 3. The app, which will be called Bluetooth, is unreleased, but I'm making this video now in hopes of gaining support from other Megasquirt users so that I can get an initial production of the hardware, which will be necessary to use the app, underway. I hope you enjoy, and see the links below for more information. Okay, here we are in the car. Um, turn the ignition on, and let's pull the app up. And it starts trying to connect to the device, which is plugged into the uh, Mega Squirt down there. We're going to talk about that piece of hardware in a little bit. I'm going to show you the app first. Uh, it retrieves everything off the Mega Squirt to start with, and that's the, all the time it takes. So, looks very much like Tuner Studio right now. You got six gauges on the front, all your status is across the bottom. Crank it up. All right, um, there we go, blah, blah, works. Um, let's talk about things going on here. Uh, data log, real quick, it works. We're logging, uh, go ahead and save it. Save an email. Um, if I could email it to myself, uh, if I don't have the email, it'll just, I can hit cancel and it's saved to the disk. And I can always go back later and uh, these are all the logs, just two of them right now. Um, but I could pull this up and email it to myself. I'm not going to do it, but I promise it works. I've done it. You can open it in Megalog Viewer. It works great. Um, all right, so everything is going to be done on like tuning pages is what I'm calling them right now. Um, and a tuning page would be just this area, this toolbar will remain there. Um, so this looks kind of like home screen and Tuner Studio-esque, um, only it's six gauges instead of eight. But let's say I want to look at my VE table. There it is. Um, they're gonna eventually it's gonna be done in like form in like a template kind of format. So I could add a new one here. I could hit this plus button up here, and I'd be able to make a new tuning page, which would have one table and three gauges, and I could map them to whatever I want, save them, and then pull them up in this menu here. Right now I just have two because that's all I've got. Um, but you can switch between them freely and um, yeah so let's go back here and I'll show you how you can you can remap these gauges let's say I'm on this one and I want to remap uh, I don't want air fuel ratio here anymore um, this is gauge well it's zero index so it's gauge three um, and here's all the things that I can set this gauge to show um, this is all done off of INI files. Nothing here is hard-coded. It's r as robust as possible. I spent a lot of time in the beginning doing this stuff so that I don't have to rewrite the app every time. Um, let's say that instead I want duty cycle 2 there, or 1. So there it is. And I could just do that with any of them. It all works. Um, uh, let's see. What else is cool here? Um, obviously the indicator gauges. Here. Um, I'm getting about 10 frames per second when you look at the data log, uh, but I can ideally get more if you crunch the numbers on the, the Bluetooth throughput and stuff. I could really get that up to 15. I just got to do a little more work with the uh, details of the connection and stuff like that. Um, I don't want to spend too much time going into stuff, but uh, let's see. Look at the lag. Um, nearly no lag. Let's if I can get them both to show up. Tack and tack. Um, pretty good pretty good and like I said look at that it's 10 frames per second not a bad number um, pretty cool and um, can't tune yet but you'll be able to tune very soon uh, before the release of the first uh, version to the store so let's talk about hardware okay here we are down by mega squirt computer um, the really bright blue light there is on the little board that I made for this um, let's get it out here so I can see it in the light and show you of course if you see the light goes off it's powered through the mega squirt um, now this uses as the name suggests of the app uh, Bluetooth to talk to the mega squirt 
um, but it's not. There's a couple of different kinds of Bluetooth, and this is Bluetooth Low Energy. It's the newest type of Bluetooth, and it's not backwards compatible with the old style Bluetooth. People are probably going, well, there's already a RS-232 to Bluetooth adapter. Those are, there's a lot of them. Well, there's not one for RS-232 to Bluetooth Low Energy. Why Low Energy? Because the iPad um, and or all iOS devices uh, will not let you have full access to the um, to the Bluetooth stuff unless you pay a ton of money to Apple um, and, and join their MFI program. If you want to read about it, go read about it, but it's uh, really expensive. So the, with the newest iPad, uh, iPad 3 and the iPhone 4S and now iPhone 5, they have they implement the newest type of Bluetooth, Bluetooth Low Energy, and it's the first time that Apple's actually let developers develop uh, with Bluetooth without having to join that program. Now the drawbacks are that the throughput's a lot lower, a lot less data can be transferred, and really I'm using this for something that it was never designed to do. It's really that uh, what they talk about being used for is um, like heart rate monitors and things that are little amounts of, in, of uh, information that aren't sent very often. So I'm really taxing the thing by, by sending all this data over it and stuff. It's really, I'm, I'm pretty much maxing out the throughput of it. Um, now the other thing is that it's not, it, it doesn't have a serial port protocol because of that. Um, so any kind of communication you want to have, you've pretty much, I had to write all the firmware that's, that's on this little chip here. Um, that little chip is the Bluetooth chip. Um, all the other stuff, boring hardware stuff. Um, I'm probably going to have a kit for this. I might have a kit version and a fully assembled version. I'm thinking about doing a Kickstarter project for it to get it going. Um, I do need some, you know, initial startup funds to get a big enough order to go to it initially. Um, but the kit will be probably a, you know, a kit with all the parts and the print circuit board. Um, the chip is the hardest thing to program. I mean, not program. Uh, solder. It's a surface mount with, it's a QFN essentially, so there's no pads on the outside. It's a little tricky to do, but if, you, if you've done that before, it's not too bad. Um, everything else is easy to solder. I did through hole on everything that I could. Um, so, probably two versions. Um, it's hard to say on a price right now, but I would guess that a fully assembled kit might be 70 or 80, depending on the initial run size, and a kit might be 50 or 40. Um, but don't quote me on that. That's just my rough guess. Depend it's totally dependent on how many people buy into this and, and uh, you know, pre-order one, so it's the, the, the bigger the run, obviously the, the cheaper it gets. Um, and that's pretty much it. Um, the, the, the fully assembled one will be plug and play. You get it, you plug it in, that's it. Um, of course, the kit, you'll have to uh, build and then you'll have to flash the firmware to it, uh, but that's not a problem. The company that makes this chip here, Blue Radios, um, has a field programmer that you can, you'll be able to flash it through the uh, serial port and you can flip this little switch which determines whether it's powered over pin 1 on this which is what Megasquirt supplies or by the micro USB here just can draw power from that so if you want to flash it at your PC you have a way to power it by just flipping this switch and then flip it back this way for um, powered over the Megasquirt. So that's it. Um, comment, like, follow the links. Um, I'm just trying to get a rough estimate of who's interested. Hope you enjoyed it.